is poetry in motion and all yeah. of that. And in studio with us, uh, this very, very fine World Music Day, we have two amazing poets, phenomenal women. We have Chioniso Sikikai, who is a writer, a performer, a poet, and a playwright from Zimbabwe. And of course, we have Emma Ofusua, who is a Ghanaian freestyle performance poet. Of course, I want to also call her a creative entrepreneur because <laughs> she's done quite a little bit of that in that field as well. Ladies, welcome, welcome to Nation FM and to Kenya. Karibuni Sanam. Has anyone taught you Karibu <laughs> and Asante? Asante. Yes. Wow. yes. Beautiful, yes. beautiful. Yes. Mauya? Tawia. Uh, Akwaba. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I am learning so many I was uh, languages. Niaje. Nia, niaje. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone really guys niaje? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, yeah. wonderful. No, we're doing well as Kenyans. Yeah, yeah. Because all the basics already. Um, but ladies, first of all, you um, are both here on creative residencies. I want to, and you were in Naivasha um, for a poetry um, convention, a conference. And I want to know a, how it feels like to just feed off of each other, especially in a foreign country country and to feed off the energy of other creatives in a space that's you know so tranquil and peaceful i'll start with uh, emma fantastic mm. i loved my stay in ivasha the environment the ambience the people and the food was amazing we actually had um someone cater to food the whole time and mm. i'm like yo get me a house here <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was beautiful and love it the setting that creative spills provided for artists to be able to engage i absolutely love the exchange of knowledge and writing styles and skills so for me it was fantastic yeah as an organizer would you have called it a success would you say you know what ten i achieved what i came here to do 10 over 10 yeah <laughs> yes. i'm so glad to hear that um what about you chioniso Okay, so my name is Chioniso. Tiki Sai. Um, Tiki Sai. Yeah, All and right. it's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, no, we'll get it right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Naivasha was really wholesome. It's my second time experiencing a poetry workshop, and generally, it's creatives need time to unwind. Or everyone needs time to unwind. But yeah. I think in a setting like that, it just fosters that creativity. Because if you think you're really good at something, you meet someone else and you're like, wow, you know, I didn't know we could do that with art. So you kind of pour into each other's cups and get a bit of diversity and talents. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Um, David, you are, you know, you're a poet as yeah. well. Uh, I don't know how it feels when sometimes you see like, you know, um, people m moving together like this and, mm -hmm. you know, feeding off each other. And I don't know what the Kenyan creative even poetry scene looks like. Yeah. I mean, scene looks like and mm -hmm. the African one in general. Yeah. Now, on honestly, first of all, I, I just love to tell them congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank um, and, you. And, and I'm, I'm really proud of you guys. Uh, because, you know, w when, when it comes to us as an African community, we have always been storytellers. Mm -hmm. And um, for a very long time, we have been trying to navigate how to tell our stories authentically. And, and, mm -hmm. and poetry, or even like in some places, being a griot, um, uh, are one of those things that have been lost in the past. And to see these things come up through residencies and things like those for me is absolutely magical. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that you're working with Creative Spills as well. You know, they're, they're doing some really, really good stuff. Um, I'd, I'd just love to ask um, the, the both of you, maybe we can start with you, Emma, as well. Um, what are some of the things that you feed off from your continent that actually help you become a better poet? Because we say we get inspiration from everywhere, you know. <laughs> um, what are some of the things you feed off from this continent? And then, of course, I'm also going to be asking um, uh, the, the, say the same question to you, Chioniso. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, I think it goes back to everything, really. But uh, in recent times, I find that I'm paying particular attention to the political scene. I'm not sure if that is because I'm diving more into creative art events and curating shows that help support artists. So it makes you get into policies and the politics around setting up such institutions. So yes, now I'm paying more attention to that. Um, and it's kind of influencing some of my writing yeah. because the frustration, man it's there mm. <laughs> um but also just in life and living it and engaging with the people that live it because um one of the major themes and i'm sure we'll get into that conversation but when i set out to do the all african women poetry festival it was to get african women to tell the african story authentically but from the woman's perspective mm -hmm. because over time most of the stories that have been told have not been heard from the Africans That's themselves. True. Even history books that are written are not written by Africans. And so the heartbeat is to get us to tell the story. So again, it is trying to get into different cultures, see what is what is the main thing that makes them authentically who they claim to be that they are. And um, for me, these are a few of the salient things that keeps me moving. And then my faith. Yeah. yeah. That's that's brilliant. That's that's wonderful. What about you, Chinisa? 
So I, I look at the continent as this beautiful melting pot of cultures and languages and experiences. And um, um, growing up, there was always this idea that when you finish school, when you're done with school, there's greener pastures outside of the continent. Um, to a point where when you actually travel throughout Africa, you realize, but there's so much at home that I haven't seen. And there's so much about the African perspective that I didn't know. So that inspires my work. And it also goes back to our origins. Um, I'm from Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, um, but I am I was raised in a Shona family. And um, back in the day, how people preserved their culture was through oral tradition, so through folk tales, through stories called Ngano. And um, Netembo is like a collection of Shona poems. So spoken word is not so much a new construct as it is something that we've made very modern. Mm -hmm. And given our background or you know having a colonial history behind it, it's like we're trying to rewrite poetry using the language that kind of m dissociated us from our own languages and now claiming that and making it our language to kind of close the barrier with us. So that inspires me a lot. Um, when I look at the s similarities between Swahili and Shona, I'm just like, okay, language is an interesting thing because you find one thing means something to you and it means the same thing but just with a different musicality to yeah. it so even the way that pe i listen a lot when people are speaking i listen a lot to people's languages and i'm like there's a certain music to the way that they're speaking that makes it very poetic mm. without you realizing it so that inspires me that everyone is a poet in their own right but they probably just don't know it wow i love that everyone is a we probably have an inner poet yeah. all of yeah. us you yeah. know yeah. that we just haven't nurtured or let free yeah. um we'll get back into the music and then come back to the c amazing conversation with you ladies in just a minute for now though we've got some uh denier dancey with india mm -hmm. 